Like a good old-fashioned outdoor band concert, there are certain American traditions that offer not only entertainment, but maybe something deeper, too. So it is with the game of baseball, which has captured our summertime infatuation for a century and a half. The band's next selection features a very famous poem, one that was first published in the San Francisco Examiner in June of 1888, and with each passing decade, it seems to grow in its importance as an American icon. So close your eyes now and imagine the smell of popcorn and the sound of the crack of the bat. Steve has his cap on. Ready. We're ready to go with his brand new musical rendition of Ernest Thayer's classic, Casey at the Bat. The outlook wasn't brilliant for the Mudville Nine that day. The score stood four to two with but one inning more to play. And then, when Cooney died at first and Barrows did the same, a pall-like silence fell upon the patrons of the game. A straggling few got up to go in deep despair. The rest clung to the hope which springs eternal in the human breast. They thought if only Casey could get but a whack at that, we'd put up even money now with Casey at the bat. But Flynn preceded Casey, as did also Jimmy Blake. And the former was a Lulu. The latter was cake, for upon that stricken multitude grim melancholy sat, for there seemed but little chance of Casey's getting to the bat. But Flynn let drive a single to the wonderment of all, and Blake, the much despised, tore the cover off the ball. When the dust had lifted and the men saw what had occurred, there was Jimmy safe at second and Flynn a hugging third. Then from 5,000 throats and more there rose a lusty yell. It rumbled through the valley, it rattled in the dell, it knocked upon the mountain and recoiled upon the flat. For Casey, mighty Casey, was advancing to the bat. There was ease in Casey's manner as he stepped into his place. There was pride in Casey's bearing and a smile on Casey's face. And when responding to the cheers, he lightly doffed his hat. 
no stranger in the crowd could doubt, twas Casey at the bat. Ten thousand eyes were on him as he rubbed his hands with dirt. Five thousand thumbs applauded when he wiped them on his shirt. Then, while the writhing pitcher ground the ball into his hip, defiance gleamed in Casey's eye. A sneer curled Casey's lip. And now the leather-covered sphere came hurtling through the air. And Casey stood a-watching it in haughty grandeur there. Close by the sturdy batsman, the ball unheeded sped. It ain't my style, said Casey. Strike one, the umpire said. From the benches black with people, there went up a muffled roar. Like the beating of the storm waves on a stern and distant shore. Kill it! Kill the umpire! Shouted someone on the stand. And it's likely they'd have killed him had not Casey raised his hand. With a smile of Christian charity, great Casey's visage shone. He stilled the rising tumult. He bade the game go on. He signaled to the pitcher, and once more the spheroid flew. But Casey still ignored it, and the umpire said, Strike two! Cried the maddened thousands, and Echo answered, Fraud. But one scornful look from Casey, and the audience was awed. They saw his face grow stern and cold. They saw his muscles strain, and they knew that Casey wouldn't let that ball go by again. The sneer is gone from Casey's lip. His teeth are clenched in hate. He pounds with cruel violence his bat upon the plate. And now the pitcher holds the ball, and now he lets it go. And now the air is shattered by the force of Casey's blow. Somewhere in this favored land, the sun is shining bright. The band is playing somewhere, and somewhere hearts are light. And somewhere men are laughing, and somewhere children shout. But there is no joy in Mudville. For Casey, mighty Casey, has struck out.